This is a Porsche 718 Cayman GT4 MR from RPM Technic. It has a Manti racing kit, that's the MR bit, but also some new brakes, a new exhaust and, perhaps most interestingly of all, shorter ratios for the manual gearbox. Now, the title for this video will probably say something suitably provocative like, is this a GT4 RS that you can actually buy? Or is this the GT4 RS manual that we've all been craving? And valid questions, which I will get to in a bit. But as well as looking at this as a, a complete dish, I think it's also worth considering the individual elements on their own merits. Starting with the Manti Racing upgrades. Many of you probably know all about the eponymous company set up by the luxuriantly mustachioed Olaf Manti in 1996, but for those of you unfamiliar with it, Manti Racing has been responsible for running Works Porsche Motorsport GT teams since 2013. It's perhaps most associated with the image of Grello 911s on the Nürburgring. Anyway, Porsche now owns 51% of the company, so these road car upgrades have the blessing of the Stuttgart mothership. The MR upgrades on this car fall into three main categories really. So you've got brakes, you've got new brake pads, and then braided brake lines. Then you've got the aero upgrades. So we've got new sort of turning vanes underneath the front of the car, the gurney flap on the rear wing, and then you can also adjust the rear wing for more aggressive angle. Then there's the suspension, which we get new three-way adjustable coilovers. Judging by the remote reservoir damps in the rear, I'm guessing they're from KW. The purple and yellow is very distinctive. The price for this little lot, well, it's around £15,000, depending on the exchange rate. The result of all that, well, the first thing you notice is that the stance is just improved. It looks really hunkered down to the tarmac. I'm not quite sure about the contrasting black on the red for the gurney flap in the rear, but overall it does look much more aggressive with the MR upgrades. You can also get some rather lovely BBS forged alloy wheels, they're not fitted to this car, but you'll have to stump up another £7,000 for those. In terms of driving, you don't really notice the aero obviously on the road, but you certainly notice the suspension. It's still definitely usable on the road, but it is much firmer. And I can really see where that would be a benefit on the track because the standard Cayman GT4 is very good on the track. The fundamental balance is brilliant. It gives you so much confidence and makes you feel, to be honest, like an absolute hero, just the way you can play with it. But it did always feel like it could be perhaps just a little bit sharper, perhaps. It felt like there was definitely an RS upgrade to come and this delivers on that. You can see how on track it would give you greater precision, certainly under braking in high speed corners, that sort of thing. It just feels tougher, more locked down. On the road, the suspension is, is definitely still usable, but it is, it's not as resolved as the standard setup. I think you've got to want to do lots of track days to then just be happy with the compromise on the road. So if you do track days and you have a Cayman GT4, then yes, I think the MR upgrades really are something worth looking at. If you predominantly drive on road, I'm not sure I would bother. Now, what to look at next? I think probably because they sort of go hand in hand with the MR upgrades in terms of being particularly suited to track, the brakes. They're by a company called Surface Transforms, based in Liverpool, which supplies carbon ceramic brakes to not only automotive, but also aerospace companies. It has been a Tier 2 supplier for Formula 1, and its first road car contract was with Koenigsegg for the CCX. Now it is cropping up more and more, and the Aston Martin Valkyrie is perhaps the most high-profile application yet. So what are the advantages to these brakes? Well, initially, cost because they're about half the price of factory PCC fees. A little bit over, but roughly half. And the other advantage is that you can reface these two or three times within their life. If you get a chip on PCC fees, 
then you have to replace them. And you have to replace both of the ones on that particular axle, which is, you know, that's gonna hurt. These, however, can be repaired. It's all because of the way they're made. So they use long strands which are sort of sewn together rather than the chopped carbon of Brembo's. These are also 70% lighter than steels. PCCBs are 50% lighter, these are 70% lighter, which, well, obviously helps with rotational and unsprung mass. In terms of feel, well, you get a really firm pedal underfoot, which is nice and confidence inspiring actually, and gives you a lovely platform for healing and towing. On the track, they're said to be particularly good at thermal management, so essentially resisting fade after lots and lots of stops, after lots and lots of laps. They certainly felt like they would stay rock solid under duress, but obviously without actually giving them a lot of sustained abuse on a circuit or a long alpine descent, I can't really verify the claim. It gives me an excuse to borrow the car again for a track day at some point. At times on the road, I have felt like it's perhaps just a little bit too firm underfoot, so when you're not driving really quickly, you don't get that actual sense of just being able to sink into the brake pedal and really finesse the braking. When you're not going absolutely flat out, I do think the standard steels or ceramics probably do just give you a little bit more feel. But overall, for half the cost of PCCBs or thereabouts, pretty impressive. That price is around £12,500, which is a lot, but a full set of PCCBs will, as I say, set you back even more. By the way, I should probably have said that RPM Technic, who you might remember from the 997 CSR that I drove a couple of years ago, actually bought this GT4 in comfort guise, and then fitted a few items to bring it up to a more club sport sort of spec. Which has some advantages because, well, comfort spec are more readily available and also slightly cheaper than club sports, so they've added in these 918 seats and then the Manti half cage and the Manti harnesses, which obviously I'm not wearing at the moment. It's worth bearing in mind, if you, if you fancy a club sport but can't find one, then don't discount getting a comfort and upgrading it. Next up in the list of shiny new bits fitted to this car is the exhaust. <laughs> RPM does all sorts of options for exhausts. This one's by Ryan Edwards and costs about three and a half thousand pounds plus about an hour of labor to fit it. It still works off the binoculars button. I wouldn't say it gives a huge amount of difference over a standard exhaust, but that's the point of this because this is going to go to a lot of track days and they don't want it tripping noise meters all over the place. It gives a slightly different sound high up, perhaps just a little bit more noise. But, the same, I don't think it's wildly different to the standard exhaust. Doesn't sound any worse though. <laughs> and finally, I think I've saved the best till last. Yes, the solution for the most off-maligned part of a standard GT4, the tool ratios in the gearbox. The starting point is that RPM fits a new crown wheel and pinion and then as an extra thing you can have a lightweight clutch and flywheel and an overdrive six. The end result is that this does 71.3 miles an hour at 8000 RPM in second gear. For reference, second gear in a standard manual box is good for 83 miles an hour and 77 miles an hour in a PDK equipped car, so this is a decent bit shorter. It's not quite as short as the gearing in the 718 GT4 RS because that's 72 miles an hour at the top end of second, but that's 9,000 RPM as opposed to 8,000 RPM. However, it really does make a difference to this car. It's just, it just feels more alive with that late, lightweight clutch and flywheel and then those shorter ratios so you can really enjoy going up and down the box that much more. One upgrade that this has got that I'm not sure you should fit if you're in the UK is a longer sixth gear because at 60 miles an hour you're doing about 1800 RPM which is pretty useless to be honest. <laughs> However, RPM is well aware of this fairly obviously and they're going to do a different overdrive sixth for the UK. 
the main event though is that short gearing. It just, I can see how it would be great on track because sometimes on some circuits you feel like all you need is third gear. But on the road in particular, it just wakes the whole car up. It makes it feel so alive. You don't have to be buzzing that 8,000 RPM red line the whole time to enjoy it either. It's just the fact that it feels, well, quicker, fairly obviously, more responsive. It is such a wonderful gear shift that it's, it's a real shame if you don't feel like you have the opportunity to use it and to stretch that engine as often as possible. The price for the crown wheel and pinion conversion is just under £6,500, while the lightweight flywheel and clutch together with the Overdrive 6 will add another £1,200 to that. Tot up all the upgrades and you reach a figure of around £40,000, which is a lot, but then this is more than just a sticker pack. So to come back to those original questions, is this a GT4 RS that you can actually get hold of, or is it a manual GT4 RS? Well, no, because it doesn't have that GT3 engine, which not only has a decent chunk more power, but also has that spine-tingling soundtrack, particularly with those intakes coming in just behind your shoulders. This simply cannot compete. However, does the existence of the RS mean that a standard Cayman GT4 is somehow a bad car? Far from it. It is still absolutely fabulous. And I think some of the upgrades on this are well worth considering, whether you use your car on road or track or a combination of both. Hello, me again. A um, couple of things. Firstly, we are so close to hitting a million subscribers on Carfection. So if you haven't already, please just you know hit the button and the bell notification icon, but, but mainly the button because you could be that millionth subscriber. It's that close. Also, if you want to uh, have a look at our GT4 RS film to refresh yourself of what that car's like, then just hit the link. Thank you very much indeed for watching. See you next time.